that? That's what they all say. Pick a number. The culture of Burning Man, we're told, is the sort of thing that you just have to experience to understand, and once you do, you'll never be the same. Given how accustomed most of us are to consumer culture, one of the biggest culture shocks is that there is almost nothing for sale here. There's no money exchanged except to buy your coffee right, or ice. that's giving in to the man. <laughs> yes, a little bit. If you have, if you have money, that's, that's playing the game. <laughs> Participants, or burners as they're called, bring all the food and water they'll need for the week, plus extra things to gift. Unlike in a barter system, these gifts are unconditional and could be anything from a shiatsu massage to a banana. Of course, anything you are gifted or any garbage you create must come back out with you. As the fest follows a strict leave no trace policy. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, mm -hmm. not you. What happens in Black Rock City you take home with you. Number four, burners get around in art cars. Art is our public transportation, said Larry Harvey, creator of the festival. If you want to drive a car around Black Rock City, you need to apply for a permit from the Department of Mutant Vehicles. And your ride will need to meet certain standards of sound, lighting, safety, interactivity, and mutation. Of course, art cars aren't the only impromptu interactive canvases. Impressive structures spring up every year, including an actual observatory. The Temple is an annual installation where burners create memorials for loved ones. And at the end of the week, along with the giant wooden man, it's cathartically burned to the ground. Number three, activity titles alone are interesting enough for an entry. We're at Burning Man! Here's just a small sampling of the thousands of radically expressive activities and events at the festival, which, in the spirit of gifting, are completely free. Tea and porn. Spankings and cookies. Angels, aliens and outlaws, hip hop water gun fight. Pornogami. Bad advice booth. Magic Pancake Project. I wish I could make these kind of uh, pancakes for a living, uh, make a fortune. Ask a Buddhist. Human powered obstacle course. Hot sex fire jam. Biochemistry of psychedelics, sketchy the clown drinking contest, knife throwing class, and finally, thankfully, 12 step meetings. Such a lame this is lame. Totally lame. It's awesome. It only gets better and better. I feel completely comfortable missing that party. Number two, tech billionaires chill in entitlement camps. Come check out my tent. I ordered a bunch of crap off Sky Mall. I got my TV, my Xbox, DVD, awesome bed right there. DJ Roomba's in the mix. Uh, it's like I'm not even camping. The average burner pays a few hundred dollars for a ticket and stays in a camp of people in RVs, tents, and DIY shelters. In fact, creating your own DIY experience is kind of the whole point. Care for some fondue? Yeah. In recent years, though, super rich folks, among them Silicon Valley billionaires like Tesla Motors' Elon Musk and Amazon's Jeff Bezos, have been upgrading themselves into exclusive, luxurious, air-conditioned accommodations that reportedly cost up to $25,000 per person. Gotta keep the riffraff out. No offense, everybody. Festival organizers have been cracking down on concierge services that offer pre-packaged, plug-and-play luxury Burning Man vacations, saying that it erodes the festival's culture. I am used to a certain level of comfort in my life, and I didn't want to sacrifice that. Number one, you might die, and that's your responsibility. In fact, it says so right on the ticket. It's hard not to see why. People are exposed to fairly extreme weather, climb on big interactive sculptures, zip around on mobile art, create massive walls of fire, and do most of this on drugs. The specific numbers might be somewhat confounded by the fact that serious accidents are treated off-site in nearby Reno, Nevada, 